Excellent, dear Boris. Excellent. You've got the unfestive mood all right with the tree decorating. Thank you very much. I, uh, there's our weeping angel and our, our Krampus doll in the middle. And of course, all our stockings are hung. <laughs> ah, evil greetings, dear fiends. And welcome to tonight's special spooktacular Yule Tidings. <laughs> I see you made it to our unfestive Yule Tidings. It was a trip, was it not? Getting through all the snow and, and of course, some areas didn't get any snow, right, Boris? I mean, all we got was sunshine and oh hateful things like that but let us not get out of our unfestive mood <laughs> doesn't it just send goosebumps up and down your spine <laughs> boris and i have just put the finishing touches on our tree in hopes that the jolly old man in the red suit will pay us a visit. <laughs> you know, otherwise known as Satan Claus. <laughs> I do hope we get a large bag of coal this year. You know, being home for the holidays is always the way to go, especially if you have a mad killer in the house with you, right Boris? <laughs> this year's Yule Tide Spooktacular feature is actually called Home for the Holidays and it stars our old pal Walter Brennan and Sally Field. You remember Walter from uh, Grandpa McCoy from the real McCoys and Sally Field played well the Flying Nun. <laughs> also, she played Sybil. You remember that multifaceted young lady who had all those uh, personalities? Talk about your split personality, right, Boris? <laughs> so let us get around here and put it into the old haunted keyboard. That's Home for the Holidays, starring Walter Brennan and Sally Field. Now, let's tune into the old haunted TV set and have ourselves a Yule Ton Tidings. <laughs> It's 5.30. I'm on my way to pick them up. Is it still raining? No, Pop. It's let up for a while. Take care, Alex. Drive carefully. I will. Now you go back to sleep.
getting this out of your way. Dr. Lindsay now. I'd heard you come back. I couldn't believe it. It's been a long time. Nine years. But it's just for the holidays, not for good. Even so, the fact you've come back at all, after what happened, means this old town can breathe a little easier. Your uh, sisters are coming, too, or so they say. Who are they, Doctor? The town. Just town talk, Alex. And if there's one thing the good people of Kenya like to talk about, it was the Morgan family. Your sisters are coming, aren't they? I'm on my way to the airport to pick them up now. They should be arriving at 6.15, unless the plane's held up by this weather. That's why I'm hurrying. It'll be a race back to Father's before the road washes out. Still mothering them to death, huh? I'll tell them you said hello. Go get a drink before we catch pneumonia. Betty, you drank enough on the plane to last you through New Year's Eve. Come on, Chris. Help me with the luggage. No. You've been stalling too long. Unless you tell me exactly what this family crisis is, you can drive me back to the airport. Please, Joe. What's wrong, Alex? Is father ill? He's dying. Is that the only reason you made us come back? He is our father. I swore I would never set foot in that house again, not even to have the pleasure of seeing his coffin closed. If he were just dying, I'd say let his new wife bury him. But I... I couldn't ignore this. What does it say? One line. My wife is slowly poisoning me to death. We may not care whether he lives or dies, but we can't let that woman get away with murder again. very anxious to see all of you. Here, Freddy, let me help you. Alex, let's have a drink first. It's been nine years. Not now. Do we have to see him this very second? <sighs> Please. He's so desperate. What a night. Let's get it over with. Joe, he stays in the study now. He can't take the stairs anymore.
know you each have your own idea about me. I won't try to change those opinions, but I do hope that while you're here, we can all at least be civil to each other. Your father, when he used to be in the mood to talk, went on at great length about each of you. It was talk of the past, of course, but I still feel I know you well. Well, he's in there waiting. I would have liked to have welcomed you properly when you arrived, but this moment belongs to him. He's longed for it for many years. Too many. Sleeping in the same bed, Mother died in. Freddy, please don't think about that. I can't help it. I just can't help it. Mother was so beautiful. And he killed her. She killed herself. Father merely gave her 2001 reasons, all legitimate. That makes him responsible for her death. Now he's asking us to save him. He's our father. And he's waiting. Shut the door. That woman has ears that can hear sunshine. So you came. You all came. Christine, you were so young when you left. Is it graduate school that you're in now, or haven't you started yet? No, I'm in my first year. Joe, I stopped counting the husbands after the third. So did I, after I found out you didn't have to marry them to sleep with them. As I remember it, you found that out in junior high school. Frederick, poor Freddie. Is it pills or alcohol this time, or both? Please, isn't it enough that I came? You think so? After nine years, my loving daughter, you keep taking those pills, and one night you'll go like your mother did. Well, shall we talk about what we're supposed to be here for? She's out there listening. If she hears one word of this, your lives won't be worth a red cent. No. She's gone out. Looks like she's heading towards the barn. Uh, shall I keep the door open so we can hear her just in case she tries to sneak back in? My fears amuse you. Am I amused? The old man is imagining things. Is that what you... We all imagine somebody's out to murder us at one time or another. She is slowly poisoning me to death. Is that such a hard thing to believe? She's murdered before, hasn't she? We didn't come all the way up here to decide whether or not she killed her first husband. The point is, Father believes she's trying to kill him. But you don't believe it. None of you do. I believe it. Yes, you must. Even you, Alex. Even you would never have come home if you thought I was dying of natural causes. And your wife knows this? She knows why we're here? No. She thinks you came home because I begged you to. I told her I needed your forgiveness. And you needed my money. Well, I hope she believed you, for our sakes. You haven't accused her, have you, to her face? She called me a senile old fool and even offered to phone Sheriff Nolan for me. Maybe that's what we should... No! Don't you understand, Freddy? The people of this town have been waiting exactly ten years for something like this to happen. Our father would rather be murdered than laughed at. The righteous don't laugh, they cluck. 
I believed in her innocence. I believed her. And I was wrong. What do you want us to do? Save my life. The question is, how do we save it? She knows you won't let us go to the police, so we can't threaten her with that. Just what exactly do you want us to do? Get rid of her. How? Kill her! Don't be so ridiculous. Really, Joe, couldn't you see the humor the that... The one thing I have never seen in our father is a sense of humor. I was going to say the humor he's in. It was only his way of making a strong point. He wasn't asking us to literally commit murder. I'm not so sure about that. Don't be ridiculous. Excuse me. Freddy. So I'll get her a cup of coffee. Fix it for you. Sit by the stove. This weather chills right through the wall. Please. Killian still work for my father? Yes. Yes, but she's been ill. She cooked up the basics of a Christmas Eve dinner last night. She kind of expected she wouldn't be well enough to come in today. But how she walks through those boards, even when she's feeling her best, I'll never know. They scare me to death. I've got dinner in the oven. It'll be a good while before it's ready. There's some nice cheese if you need something to hold you. No, thank you. I'll just get Freddie her coffee. She's not feeling very well. Yes. I understand from your father that she also takes pills. If that's the case, she shouldn't be drinking so much alcohol. She shouldn't be drinking any at all. It's heartbreaking. A girl so beautiful and so young. I overheard Alex telling your father that Frederica's never gotten over your mother's death. What it's done to her. Does Frederica still blame your father for your mother's death? I think so. Yes. Most of us can never accept the terrible fact of suicide. But I suppose drinking a little too much is better than going a little too mad, as I did. Your coffee's ready. think she was going to give him the son's mother couldn't? That murderess? Oh, Chris. Sweet girl. You didn't know what was going on in this house. You were just a child. I remember. He'd leave mother crying in her room while he drove across town to see her. Elizabeth Hall. 
Elizabeth Hall Morgan now. Mother would have left a note. Not for him, for us. Oh, she loved us. She loved us. I haven't been loved since the day she died. Of a broken heart. Didn't she, Chris? Didn't she die of a broken heart? Didn't she die of a broken heart? Yes, Freddie. Yes, I guess she did. Look, Freddie, why don't we get dressed in something nice and come on downstairs to dinner? It's almost ready. I'm having my dinner. We were home for the holidays. Sit down. Are we going to wait for... She's drunk. I was going to say our intended victim. Shh. Keep your voice down, Joe. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Would one of you like to say grace? Thank you, Lord, for this food that was set before us. And hold us, all of us, close to thee. Amen. I was so hoping your father could join us for this. The Christmas Eve dinner is one tradition he's always found strength to uphold. Well, last year, he had a very high fever. He was down with something Dr. Lindsay called galloping old age. And what does Dr. Lindsay call my father's present condition? Your father has forbidden me to call in Dr. Lindsay. Or any doctor. Why? Well, some men are too proud to die of old age. So they convince themselves it isn't happening. Or else blame it on something else. Or someone else. Father may be too proud, but he's not paranoid. All men are paranoid. That's why some of them finally do get murdered. I mean, a wife can take just so much, can't she? You sound like you've been married. More than once. But then I always had Alex to run home to when things got crazy. So I never had to resort to murder. Well, nor have I. Heavens, I, I hope you don't think I was implying. I'm quite aware of the implication. Uh, did they ever find out who did poison your husband? Well, the two of you were alone in the house that evening, according to the papers, that is. Yes, the two of us were alone. And wasn't it in something he drank just before going to bed? The hot toddy that I made for him, just as I did every night. Maybe he did it himself. Uh, you're the first person that's considered that possibility. Aside from the grand jury, and myself, of course. Oh, well, it's all in the past. I'd hardly ever think of it at all if it weren't for the people in this town who still enjoy treating me as if I were a cold-blooded murderess. I still remember it, though. The long days in that cold prison cell. The months looking for someone Fearless enough to give me a job and a place to live. It was like a nightmare that didn't seem like a nightmare until I woke up. Screaming in an asylum. I will tell you this. If a nightmare like that should ever happen again, if for some evil reason I'm ever accused by anyone of killing, the next time, I will not be the one who wakes up screaming. Not that friend. 
out on you, Alex. If I'm running out on anyone, it's father, because whether he dies of arsenic or galloping old age simply doesn't matter to me anymore. It may have once, but no more. Whatever he may have been or done, he's still our father. Look who's talking. Who wanted us to leave him in the first place? Well, I never considered him guilty for mother's death, morally or otherwise. She was batty from the day Chris was born. As batty as poor Freddie is now. Charming way to talk about your family. Alex, I'm a big girl now. Stop treating me like a child. Stop playing big sister. I'm sorry. You know, I once told Chris that I felt we were your emotional prisoners. And she said, wouldn't it be funny if it was the other way around? If you were our emotional prisoner. Are you? I'm sorry if I made you feel like a prisoner, Joe. Oh, but please don't take this moment to make your great escape. We need you. Doesn't it matter to you that we need you? Don't try and give me the guilt. I am the first to admit I am no good at family crises. But not bad at causing them. I didn't cause this one. All right, but something has to be done about it. About her, and I can't do it alone. It's Freddie in that state, and Chris... Well, Chris is just a baby. I need your help, Joe. To do what, exactly? I don't know. All I know is we can't let her kill father. You really believe him, don't you? Well, don't you? I can't explain it, Alex, but the first moment you showed me his letter, I had this eerie feeling we were being tricked into coming here. Well, why would he do that? Okay. Suppose she is trying to kill him. Why? Well, I guess she can't wait to... He's already told her we're back in his will now that all's forgiven. So she can't possibly hope to get the whole thing for herself anyway. There are other motives besides profit. Countless. Some people kill just for the thrill of it. Does Elizabeth Hall Morgan strike you as the kind of woman who's searching for thrills? Maybe she's just looking to be free. What was that expression you used? Emotional prisoner. Alex, I'm going. And it's still raining. You can't fly in this weather. I'd better call and make sure there'll be an evening train. I've already called. But I'll need to borrow your car. And I have the keys. They're in my bag. Joe, how are you going to explain your leaving to father? He'll never believe you're going home. He'll think you're going for the sheriff. If I miss the last train, I just might.
Chris. Chris, I'm ready to leave. I must have left the keys in the car. What's the matter? I... I can't face Freddie when she's like that, and she's liable to make another scene. Say goodbye for me. Please, Joe. Okay. I'll say goodbye to her. Alex, what'll I tell Father? That he'll believe, I mean. Let me handle it. It could be months before he even notices you're gone. Stop screaming. Hi. Hi. I was just in the neighborhood and I thought I'd drop by and say Merry Christmas. Come on in. What is it? Open it. Oh. Ted. 
Oh, it's lovely. I'm glad you like it. Oh. oh, this is so nice of you. I'm sorry, but I don't have anything to give you. Well, how about letting me get warm by the fire? I'm freezing. Oh, sure, come on in. Tell me, what's a nice, sane man like you doing all the way out here on Christmas morning? I had to stop in and look at Mrs. Killian. Oh, how's she doing? She's doing much better. Good. Anyway, being as I was so close, I couldn't help but stop by and take a fresh look at someone who secretly worshipped me when she was all of 16. Oh, I guess I wasn't being as secretive as I thought. Your face was never a very good place to hide things. You're not married. Why, do I look not married? Yeah. How come? Truth is, I scare them off. How? Well, I don't know. I, I have a habit of needing too much. Well, no, that's not a habit. That's a way of life. Well, well as much as I hate to, I better be heading back to town. Am I scaring you off? <laughs> no, you're not scaring me off. Uh, if your father found out I was here, he might be very upset. He gave Miss Morgan strict orders. Did she tell you that? Didn't have to. I was standing right outside the door. Heard it myself. Ted, could you tell just by looking at him? Tell what? What's the matter with him? Come on. He uh, can't throw me out for just wishing him a Merry Christmas. Dr. Lindsay just wanted to wish Father a Merry Christmas. He's sleeping. Look, I know it's bothering you. But unless your father would allow me to do the lab tests, it would be his word against mine. And hers. Well, how do you know? Did Alex show you the letter? No. Well, Father wrote her that Elizabeth was trying to poison him. <laughs> That's funny. Because it was Elizabeth who asked me to come here. It was about a month ago. She told me that he'd accused her of trying to poison him. She was hoping that I'd be able to prove to him that he was just imagining things. Well, now, she... She wouldn't have done that if she weren't innocent. Or clever. Look, if the roads are clear tomorrow, why don't I stop in again? Do you think there'll be a washout? Hard to tell. The river's still rising. In any case, call me if you have a sudden need to hear a friendly voice. Keep it that way till I get back. <laughs> Greetings, my dear fiends. Greetings. Are you enjoying tonight's unfestive holiday special spooktacular? <laughs> Home for the holidays with Walter Brennan and Sally Field? <laughs> I do hope so. You know, 
Speaking of unfestive holidays, <laughs> Yule is the great time of year for especially uh, gift ideas. And this particular one right here is a, called a Russian uh, doll set, which features our old pal uh, Santa Claus, <laughs> affectionately known here as Satan Claus. <laughs> and as, as you can see, it's jolly old Saint Nick. And there's a surprise though. You get more toys than just one. If you open it up, you'll get inside another toy that you can play with, another doll. And what is this? Oh, and this one seems to be Mom, uh, Papa uh, from, uh, you know, Twas the Night Before Christmas. <laughs> and if you open him up and bring him right out, bring out another doll, as you can see, that makes three dolls now. And let's put it right back together. That's Papa. And it seems to be that's uh, Mama in her kerchief. Remember the poem? And let's see. Yes, there may be a few more. Ah, yes, indeed. This seems to be... What is this one? Ah, the little girl sleeping with sugar plums and visions over her head. So that's four dolls. But could it be? Is there more? Wait a minute. Yes, there is. There is more because there's the little boy. You know, you have the little girl sleeping, and now you have the little boy sleeping with visions of sugar plums dancing in his head. But wait a moment. Aha! Uh -huh. There is even more. Let's put him next to his sister. And what do we have here? We have a very small Christmas tree where Santa Claus is leaving all the goodies and presents up under there. But, you know, you got one, two, three, four, and five, six dolls here to play with. Let's see. One more. <laughs> the Christmas tree. We'll put that right there. And under here, we have a reindeer. Isn't that great? One of Santa's little reindeers? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little dolls to play with. Could it be? Ha oh, ha. Is there even, there is one last toy to be put under the tree, and it is a little mouse. You remember? Not a creature worth staring not even a mouse? Well, there he is, my dear fiends. <laughs> so there you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight different toys out of one. Talk about your Christmas surprise. <laughs> what a magical treat. <laughs> and speaking of magical treats, let us go back to tonight's feature, Home for the Holidays. Matter, darling. Can't you sleep? Alex, what are we gonna do? Well, I'm gonna get a good night's sleep. And then I mean about Elizabeth. Well, in the morning, I'm gonna talk to her calmly and reasonably. What are you gonna say? I'm gonna ask her to leave quietly. Alex. This is her house. If she's innocent, why should she just give it up and walk away without a fight? If she's innocent, you really think she might be? She might be. Oh, Lord, how naive you are. Don't you ever get tired of being so eternally childish? Oh, I'm sorry, Chris, I didn't mean to say that. Just that, well, it's been a hard day for me, too. It's just that it never seems to change. I feel like this whole thing's on my shoulders. Betty runs to her bottles and pills. Joe runs to her parties. I'm still here. Don't mind me. It's the storm that's getting on my nerves. Good night, darling. Good night. It's cold in this house. Do you have enough blankets? Yes, I'm fine, thank you.
of us seem to be having trouble sleeping tonight. Would you like some of this? What is it? Warm milk and honey. I made some for your father earlier. But I don't suppose your sister allowed him to drink it. Why don't you get yourself a mug and have some? No, thank you. I never need anything to help me sleep. Just restless. Yes, I guess that's it. I understand. Good night. Good night. Did you know the telephone was out? Yes, I did. From the storm, I would imagine, wouldn't you? Yes. She's dead. What's happened? What's going on up there? Stay with father. <laughs> Please tell me what's happened. Frederica has killed herself. Oh. God forgive her. Poor Frederica. She has finally done it. It could have been accidental. I saw some pills on her dressing table and I warned her that mixing alcohol with barbiturates can easily be fatal. Were you in her room last night? Yes. 
Why? Her crying disturbed me. I brought her something to help her get some sleep, milk and honey. And she drank it? You mean after you'd warned her about me? I don't think any of them believed you, Ben. I know Joanna didn't. Even so, she did not drink it. Oh. How do we know that? Because I drank it myself. You'll find the empty mug on my bedside table, still unwashed. Sheriff Nolan should have no trouble analyzing what's left in the mug, nor my fingerprints. You know I wouldn't let them call me Sheriff. Well, they couldn't even if they wanted to. The phone is dead. And it rained heavily all night. The roads are bound to be washed out. We are trapped here. There's no way back until the river goes down again. Now, you'd better get back to bed before you catch your death. There's no mug on your table. There's no mug. And there are no pills or vials in Freddy's room. need us anymore. But we may need each other. I think I'd better look in on Daddy. You fix some coffee. We need something in our stomachs. Alex, I don't want to be alone. That's all right, darling. Uh, she's in her room. I'll leave the study door open so I can hear you if you call. It's still dead. Accidental Freddy's death. An overdose of vodka? <laughs> yes, but if she was taking sleeping pills. Where would you get them? Don't you think I took that precaution? After she cut her wrists, I searched her room. Her medicine cabinet, her handbag. Besides, there was nothing in that milk. Why well, get rid of the mug? you understand? Elizabeth is afraid that we're going to take all this away from her. Oh, it's not just the money and the property, but... Well, this is her sanctuary. So she's going to kill all of us? How can she hope to get away with it? It's insane. Of course it's insane. She's insane. Well, then why didn't she try to stop Joe? Well, maybe she didn't know Joe was going. Just be thankful that she got away. Yeah. At least if anything does happen to us, there'll be someone to see that she doesn't get away with it. What are we going to do? Just sit here and wait for it to happen? What would you suggest? The roads are washed out, the telephone lines are down. It's ten miles to town. Can you walk ten miles in this weather? Or have you forgotten Joe took my car? No, but I can walk one mile to Mrs. Killian's house. What could she do? An old woman sick in bed. I don't know. Maybe her phone is working. Alex, I know I'm grasping at straws, but I can't just sit here and wait to die. What do you think will happen to you if you get lost in those woods? Alex, I know those woods inside and out. Every tree, every path. That was nine years ago. You think everything stays the same, don't you? Nothing ever changes. And nothing ever will until I do. I'm going, Alex. Chris! Hey,
father. He's dead. Joe, I ran to the house. I was looking for you, and she chased me. And I found Father. I managed to get out of the house. I, uh, I just ran. I know, Chris. I knew you'd come to me. You all always came to me. Alex, she would have killed me if I hadn't gotten away. She wouldn't have killed you, Chris. She didn't kill Joe. She didn't kill Freddy. She didn't kill Father. Emotionally. Your, your helpless little faces would have followed me wherever I went. And sooner or later, I'd have come running back because somebody needed me. Even father, after all these years. Even father. Alex. Alex, please. Please, Alex. Now, none of you will ever need me again. running for her life. Oh, she was, she was wearing that, that little blue park I gave her for her birthday. She must have been frightened out of her mind. I called to her. She couldn't hear me. She just kept running into those godforsaken woods. Let me take you back to town. We'll take your car. No, I've got to find Chris. She's all I have left. She's in there somewhere. She may be hurt. Do you think you can... Get back to town alone? Oh, you mean... You mean you, you look for her? I think I have a better chance on foot than you have. Yes, I suppose so. Take the main road. They've got part of it cleared now. Tell Sheriff Nolan. 
to get some troopers in there to back me up. It'll be morning before. I'll be okay. You just come back here with the sheriff. Tell him everything. Show him the letter. The letter? Chris told me your father wrote to you and what he said. How could Chris? I stopped by Christmas morning. Oh, oh yes, I forgot. I saw your car. I, I was busy taking care of Freddy. You can find the main highway, can't you? You won't get lost again. No. Hurry, Alex. father's in the study. And Joe's body's over there behind the barn. And your sister's body? Alex? I found Chris. I put her in there. Sheriff? I have to call the coroner. Well, before you do, I have a few questions.
take care of her. I will. Chris? My Evilness, Boris, that was such a great film and just perfect for a holiday special. I guess the older sister was the one to scream all alone in her jail cell. Hmm? <laughs> it was looking pretty grim there for just for a moment for the stepmother. I even thought for a minute that Sally Field was going to turn out to be the killer. <laughs> you can just never tell in these films, can you, Boris? <laughs> what a twist. What a twist. Well, Boris, are you ready for jolly old Saint and Claus to bring our presents and monster toys? You are? <laughs> well, I guess we better get ourselves to our coffin and perch. And you, my dear fiends, are you ready? <laughs> we want to thank you all for being here with us for this very unfestive holiday gathering and hope to see you next year in 2022 for our new season 13 for even more screams and chills here on Monster Movie Night. And until then, as always... <laughs> Keep screaming. <laughs>